Hey there, it's Teresa. I'm live. Hello. Tap, 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 tap. Um, so I haven't done a live in a while. So I um, thought it would be a good time to uh, touch base with my Facebook community. And um, these videos what I do is they serve a, a dual purpose because I do a Facebook Live and then I will download the video and put it on my YouTube channel. So whether you're watching this video live or on my YouTube channel, I'd like you to be sure and comment below so that I know that you're here. And uh, if it's YouTube, leave a comment, like, share, you know, all that good stuff. Um, Today's topic is I want to talk about the market update, you know, where we're at in real estate and mortgages. And um, so my name is Teresa Timms. I'm president of TDR Mortgage and Real Estate Group in Upland, California. And why you should, why should you even listen to me? Why should you even tune in, right? Um, well, I've been um, in mortgage and real estate since 1998. I am the owner of this broker shop. I'm a big believer in the broker channel and have been for many, many years as I believe it serves my customers the best. Um, I have the ability to shop around with wholesale lenders and deliver the exact right product to my client for their particular situation. I'm also a licensed real estate broker. I don't do real estate that often. If I do, it's for a very close friend or family member. Um, and let's see, okay, so getting into the, okay, so that's who I am. That's why you should listen to me. And I have been fearlessly and flawlessly guiding my clients um, down the right path since 1998. And many times I've, told people to take a certain action and um, they've had success. So they keep coming back to me. Um, so remember to comment below, especially if you're in real estate, I'd like to kind of get a take uh, real estate or mortgages. So let me get your take on, you know, what you're seeing out there in the market. I think that would be interesting to, um, to everybody. Let's see, Robert, Mike, Henry. Hey guys, Steve. Hey, Brad. All right, so we've got a few. Oh, thank you, Coral. I actually wore makeup today. <laughs> I haven't been wearing makeup that often lately. All right, so here's the deal. Um, the current market is mostly stable. You know, it's, it's, um, it's not quite a buyer's market. It's not quite a seller's market. I think it really goes off of the price. You know, that sweet spot where people want their payment to be Fifteen hundred dollars. The two fifty to four fifty range is on fire, and if it's priced right and it's in great shape, you're still against multiple offers. Um, agents, you know, aren't really paying too much in closing cost. Um, so at that that price range, I don't see declines. <laughs> We're seeing things move upward, but only slowly. Um, so da, 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 da. and if you're in um you know if you're not in agreement with that and you're in real estate or mortgages i suggest you get out there and look at some of the local market data uh if you go to a bruce norris event or look at the stuff that stephen thomas is putting out you can't deny the market that we're in and where we're headed right now so um i think that if people make prudent decisions um, we'll go more into that later. So some areas are declining. And do you know that in the higher end market and uh, unique properties, uh, we are seeing price declines, price reductions. And um, I've actually had a lot of low appraisals lately, a lot. So, you know, in my refinance transactions, I'm doing extra diligence to arm my clients with the best sales comparables that I can provide them so that they're able to give those to the, to the appraisers to sustain those values. Uh, now, some areas are stable. I feel like um, 
gosh, you know, several areas in the Inland Empire. I, I, I again, it goes back to that, you know, the, the price. Okay, let me go back to Facebook and see if people have commented. Todd, like the shirt. <laughs> Thank you. It's cute, huh? Uh, Michelle, hi, Michelle. Okay, so um, okay, and and some areas are still going up slightly, ever so slightly. When I've pulled my listing agent friends and my real estate friends. You know, and we're, we, I work with a lot of, tons of buyers agents. We have a lot of active purchase transactions. And um, it's not easy to get your offer accepted still, especially in that, that sweet spot price range. Um, I'm trying not to say, um, it's one of my things that I don't do so well when I'm talking. <laughs> okay, so you guys can remind me, right, if, I, if I'm umming too much. Purchase opportunities. There's a lot of really, really great purchase opportunities out there. And when people say, gosh, is it, you know, should I wait and buy or is it a good time to buy? I think it just really all depends, you know, if the rents, go back to that old question, if the rents match the mortgage payment or they're a little bit higher, buy that house, buy 10, buy 20. Um, eventually, the rents will go up. Eventually, you're going to be sitting pretty, not to mention the great tax write-off. So uh, if you are buying right now, though, you just want to take great care to make sure you're not overextending yourself and putting yourself in a bad situation. We will, you know, people forget well, it goes up and then it goes down. People just seem to forget that. I talked to a lot of people, <laughs> they just talk about, oh, yeah, we're fine. Nothing's going to happen. Don't worry. Well, yeah, in the short term, but you always want to think about now and in the future. And so when we're um, guiding you, whether you're selling a house, buying a house, refinancing, we're looking at where you're, where you are right now and, you know, where you're going to be, where you want to be. How can we position you? You know, how can we put you in the best position possible? Okay, so... I've been seeing, you know, looking at prices, to me, Orange County is just ridiculous and expensive. <laughs> and there's a lot of areas in the in LA County and Eastern San Bernardino, or yeah, Eastern San Bernardino County that are, are very pricey. And I don't know, with a low down payment, kind of for me, don't pencil. Uh, areas in, there's a lot of really great properties in Riverside and Harupa Valley that are priced great and, you know, work commuter friendly. Also the Big Bear Lake area, Lake Arrowhead and Las Vegas area. I've been visiting a lot of family in the Henderson and I've been going to like open houses and stuff out there and gosh, the prices out there are ridiculous. So let's see, a 15 year Brad. Okay, I'll, I'll answer that in just a second. Um, purchase opportunities. Oh, Cal HFA. It's my favorite first time buyer program in that it's super, super reliable. We can close those loans in like, I don't know, 30, 35, 40 days. I like to write an offer at 35 days just to give me a little bit of a cushion. But Calhafa, it just wasn't penciling because let's say the regular rate was four and a quarter on FHA and then Calhafa was like 5.75. Well, nobody wants that ugly rate. <laughs> nobody wants that. So it just didn't seem to make sense for a lot of my clients. And, you know, when you're comparing and contrasting and recommending ways to purchase, that only made sense a couple of times for for people that I put in those products in the last 12 to 24 months. Now the rate is commensurate with a regular FHA rate. So we priced one out the other day and it was 3.75. So now how sweet is that, that it's a low rate and you can get in like a $400,000 house, get in with like two or three grand. Now, grant it's a first-time buyer program, so there's lots of different restrictions, exclusions. You've got a first, a second, and a third. So it's a it's one of those things where, hey, if you can't come up with the 20 grand that you need to get into a house, um, why not? You know, what a great opportunity. So I'm gonna be doing a separate video to educate people about the Calhafa program and the pros and cons. Um oh, I just did it again. Dang it. Okay. 
So be sure to comment below and say hello, like, and if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and comment below. And subscribe to my channel too. That would be really super great. You know, I'm really working hard on my YouTube channel right now. Um, okay, so where am I at? Refinances. I feel okay. You uh, by now everyone's heard the rates are down, rates are great. You should refinance. Refinances should still be done on a case by case basis. Not everyone will benefit. I am finding that almost everyone I talk to is benefiting right now. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and people are um, okay. One thing that you can't do refinances go off of three things they go off of your credit score, your equity position. So if your house is worth $100,000 and you owe 80, you're at an 80% loan to value. So when people are talking, oh, I've got this three and a half percent, this lender's doing this three and a half percent rate for me. It's fantastic. It's great. Well, what maybe they didn't tell you is that they have a 30% equity in their home. So uh, a 30%, somebody that's got a 70% loan to value, that's going to price out way better than somebody who's got like a 95% loan to value. They also may not mention the term. So the term is very important. 30-year loans price out higher than 15-year loans. We've been pricing some 15-year loans in the high twos and low threes. And again, it depends on if it's FHA, if it's conventional, if it's high balance, meaning what's the loan amount? Is it over that you know conforming limit of 483, 250? I think that's what it is. So there's so many variables. Um, I saw in a chat somebody had put that they got a 5% rate and they thought that was a great rate. And then someone else had said, oh no, that's terrible. I've got three and a half. Yeah, but it, you have to remember it's apples to apples. So you really have to get in there and, you know, shop around, get a second opinion, talk to your bank, credit union, whoever. And then, you know, mortgage brokers are the best value and one of the most underutilized choices for most people when seeking a refinance because there's such a high trust factor with the banks. And what I see a lot is that the even though they've made the disclosures easy to read they're still not that easy to read and i lose business because people do not know how to evaluate the disclosures they get from the lenders and i am oh, what's the word for it I do my best to educate people but sometimes that trust factor outweighs that you know, we're saving somebody $5,000 and giving a lower rate, but they just don't see it. And it gets convoluted with tax insurance. I wish I had something that I could show you. But the three top tips to keep in mind when you're evaluating a refinance, um, the number one thing, the easiest way to look at how much something is costing you is what, what is your payoff? If your payoff is $250 and your new loan is $252, Logic would dictate that that loan cost you $2,000 because it went from $250 to $252. So to me, that's like the easiest no-brainer way to look at things. Sometimes the taxes and insurance can really confuse things because maybe your taxes haven't been updated uh, with the county. And so uh, maybe the, the taxes are off. But if you look at just your pure principal and interest, so you look at your old principal and interest payment, look, take out your mortgage statement, look at that, and then look at the new lender's principal and interest. Compare that, apples to apples, apples to apples. That's what you should be doing. And when you're, the other tip, okay, my tips were, look at the old loan amount and new loan amount, that's number one. The rate, what's the rate? And look at the principal and interest payment. Just look at the principal and interest payment and then look at the lender charges. Pretend like the tax and insurance don't exist. You're gonna pay those anyway. So some lenders don't know, like if we're closing a loan in September, there's nine months of taxes that will be impounded, nine months. 
not two, not four, not six, nine. So if another lender is just showing two months, their APR is gonna be lower, like all kinds of things are gonna be lower. It's gonna appear that they're giving a better rate when really they just didn't show what it really is. Do not look at the taxes and insurance when you're comparing and contrasting lender fees. Look at the lender fees, <laughs> look at the lender fees. Okay, so I covered that. How's everybody doing today? It's Friday, Junior, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Hopefully tomorrow I can be done at four o'clock. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, three o'clock, three or four. Hi, Robin, how are you? Dustin, Brad, okay, 60% loan to value and over 800 credit score. Well, I'd say, Brad, you could have a 2% rate. No, I'm just kidding. Um, 60 percent 800 credit score i would say you'd probably be in the high twos somewhere maybe with a, a maybe a point or something like that i know we had talked about it before you and i and those 15 years weren't pricing out that great and gosh this last week or two everything i said like 30 days ago is totally out the window we're pricing out some stuff that is just thrilling that is just D delicious, just delicious, sexy. We, um, um, I did a loan, was it yesterday, or disclosed a loan, and it was 3.25. I mean, that just warms my heart. <laughs> Adrian, hi, how are you? Julio, okay, so getting back to my, my 2019 September market, real estate market and mortgage market update. Be sure to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Like and comment below. That would be just great. The uh, other thing to keep in mind, I get people all the time, I want to get rid of my mortgage insurance. I want out of this terrible FHA loan into a conventional loan. FHA streamlines are so fire right now. I looked at one yesterday where I could have saved my client some money going from FHA to conventional. We would have had to do a full appraisal. Remember, appraisers on refinances aren't if, as if you're selling the house. So their refinance appraisals are a little bit different and they're not as aggressive. Appraisers aren't as aggressive on those. So when the LTV is, is tight, it just makes me nervous. So in looking at a, cap, a, a rate and term refinance conventional versus FHA, on this particular one, I want to say it was like three and a half or 3.6. And, um, and the APR, APRs are so dumb. But if, I know if I quote rate, I have to say the APR. So let's just say the APR is 20% or something because APR is so stupid. Okay, so um, the, no, it was three and a half percent. It was three and a half percent. Their loan balance was going up literally $2,000, $2,000. They're saving $300 a month. Now they, they could have gone conventional too. Conventional was pricing out really good. I think it was like 3.8, 3.8 on the conventional. Um, and it was about, they had about 10% equity, so 90 LTV. But because I couldn't, I, in FHA, the streamlines, we're giving pretty good credits. That's why the loan balance only went up $2,000. On the conventional, we were adding seven or $8,000 to their loan balance because the impounds alone were like five grand and all the loan fees and everything were like three or 4,000. So in this particular case, I'm telling them, don't do the conventional do the FHA streamline, add a couple thousand dollars. And the beauty about the streamline is there's no freaking appraisal. So when the rates go lower in like a year or a year and a half, and that's my next topic, how to refinance smart, when the rates go lower in like a year or a year and a half, you're gonna be able to just streamline down without an appraisal, the value won't even matter. And you wanna set yourself up for this positive experience in the future, set yourself up for the, the, the reality that's going to happen and in, in prices will go down. And because remember what goes, <laughs> it's what happens. It's what happens. It's a real estate cycle. Okay. Let's see. Hi, Curtis, Seth, Eddie. How you doing, Eddie? Eddie's my new accountant. He was in here yesterday. Hi, Ryan. Okay. So last but not least, 
I want to um, just say a quick thing about refinancing smart. Refinancing smart, what does that mean? That means you do, when you're refinancing right now, you want to make sure that you're adding as little as possible. It's not costing a lot because you will probably be refinancing in another 12 to 18 months. So what you don't want to do is spend, you know, add $10,000 to your loan balance and then refinance in a year and lose all the benefit of that investment. So you should really, really be thinking about that. I had one uh, today. <clears throat> we looked at it in the last couple of days. 4% was pretty much a true no cost. The 3.625, I think was costing like um, just a little bit, let's say two or three grand. The amount that was costing from the 4% to the 3.6, it was, we were going to recoup that in one year. And so my recommendation was, let's do it. Let's do the lower one at the 3.6 because we'll recoup all the costs of that loan in one year. And if the rates go lower, guess what? You didn't lose any money or waste any money and you won't feel bad refinancing and starting that loan over in, in a year. Whereas, you know, gosh, if you spent like five or 10 grand, you would feel a little bit of pain in doing something like that. So all of your refinance moves need to really, really be calculated. And to be calculated, you should probably get the assistance of somebody who's really knowledgeable in the, the art of mortgage and real estate. So um, let's see if we have any, I said, I'm um, again, you guys aren't even helping me. Yes, I need to refinance smart. That's why I need you. Oh, thanks, Miss Robin. Okay. In conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, uh, thank you for tuning in and listening to me go over the 2019 California mortgage and real estate market update so that I could let you know where we're at and where we're headed and what you can do to take advantage of the uh, market opportunities that are before you. When you're looking to buy, sell, or refinance in Southern California, I'd love it if you'd pick up the phone and give me a call at 909-920-3500. Please share, like, and subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you, and have a beautiful rest of the day. We're going to end this live video.